into the future. Uh, we are seeking professional services for engineering design. As you can see here, the project takes place throughout the entire treatment plant. Uh, we're replacing a number of electrical facilities. You can see that there's five load centers. There's a, um, a switch gear M1, M2, if I may. Um, there's a, a substation right here where there's two uh, 15 kilovolt overhead feeders that go up and around in switch gear uh, M2. And those will be undergrounded as part of this design. Um, I'll talk about it a little bit more. Um, it's also going through California tiger salamander habitat. I'll talk about that more as well. Um, there's also a new switch gear, uh, part of the design in the upper right hand corner right here, which is three, that will uh, provide additional redundancy to the system in the case of a power outage or uh, work needs to be done in the plant. They can provide more opportunities to take certain uh, sets of equipment offline so they can uh, do maintenance work or repair work as needed. Um, there's also additional power supplied uh, to the plant by the co-generation facility, uh, microgrid batteries and emergency generators. All loads can be made operational and re-energized by disconnecting the failed power source, and closing the circuit breaker at the load centers. You can see um, this was taken from the Laguna treatment plant uh, electrical uh, power master plan. And the assets in red are identified as the highest probability of failure uh, with going down to a medium prob probability of failure in green and the yellow. All the assets we're gonna replace as part of this project are in the red or the green. As you can see the all the load centers where it says LC, East LC, Metal Lane LC, North LC, South LC, West LC, all red. And look at M1 and M M2, um, you know, high and medium probability of failure. Okay, here we are again. Um, there is another graphic of the, the, the slide we just looked at. There's a picture of the poles uh, they're leaning, um, they need to be replaced, and having an overhead pole, they also need to be maintained by specialized crews, they need to be clean, and so forth. Um, it's, it, they're vulnerable to weather or natural hazards, uh, by, so by placing the, um, the, by undergrounding the overhead feeder lines, that addresses those issues. Um, let's see what else. In there. So, oh yeah, so the, the California tiger salamanders um, presence in there, uh, because we'll be do doing ground disturbing activities that will trigger an initial study mitigated negative deck. So that's gonna get going right away um, in parallel to the design so we can get going. Also, we anticipate um, what we know uh, as part of the permitting process, when, they, when we go, they're gonna require salamander fencing around that perimeter. And what that does is the sal tiger salamanders, they live in, in gopher burrows and in the ground. And then under heavy rains, they come out and they seek, you know, drier areas and they'll go along the fence and they will find a way to get out. And it's a one-way gate. So it reduces in incidental takes um, during constructions. It's required at least one rainy season, sometimes two. So this will also be done in, in conjunction at, towards the end of, of the design. So we, we don't have any, we won't experience any delays during construction, during the permitting. We'll already have this part of it taken care of. So you're like, what's a load center? I got, I got lots of pictures. This is the, the West Load Center. There's a lot of electrical components inside that cabinetry. And you'll see on the next slide, kind of, what's inside. Um, I'm not gonna go into too depth, in depth, but basically it's all the electrical equipment needed to run the plant on a daily basis. It's very intricate. There's the North Load Center, Meadow Lane Road Load Center. 
South Load Center. This is a switch gear. We, we talked about M1 and M2 getting replaced. We're adding M3. This is a, an example of a, the switch gear. Where you've heard lots about potholing and so forth throughout your time here. So what we plan to do is a comprehensive pothole plan because unfortunately much of what's in the ground at Laguna Treatment Plant, we just don't know, we discover during potholing. So that's not good enough. We don't want to run into delay, delays during construction. So we're going to we we're gonna develop a co comprehensive pothole plan and then carry out uh, the potholing operation based on that plan and then 3D model it so that we can design the ducting. There's lots of new ducting going through there in places where we're less likely to encounter underground um, facilities because the pothole is only as good as your pothole. But the more we have, we have, especially with a 3D model, um, that's the best chance we have to minim minimize conflicts during construction. Part of what we do when we, we, we submit a request for proposals is we ask, are there any additional items that you think might be useful to the project? Things that uh, maybe um, something we didn't think about that we could add to the benefit. And there was two um, things that were added. One was a a, a pump station a standby power study to look at the, the capacity of the existing standby power and how it relates to uh, the new um, the new equipment that we're putting in, especially that, that new switch gear and such, to make sure that we have adequate uh, backup power in the event of a, a, of a of a power loss. Also, look at um, staffing needs to for maintenance uh, for this upgraded system. So it will last long into the future. Schedule. Well, the March moved to April, but that's okay. Um, so I'll be I'll be taking an item. Hopefully, uh, if you guys if anything goes well today, we'll be going uh, for approval of the contract to the board in April. Um, and then, as you can see, the environmental will start at the same as the design in parallel. Um, in the procurement. So the electrical equipment has very long lead times. I mean, we're finding out on a lot of our projects, unfortunately, some of the items like transformers, these large trans transformers can take up to three years or more. Um, just the basic, um, it's, it's about 500 days for basic uh, controller cabinets and so forth. So to, to help get this project going as fast as possible, um, we figured we'd start the procurement at the 75% design level. We had, we had enough, enough information to uh, solicit bids, start that process, complete the design, move forward with construction, which you see um, we, would, we would be going for consideration of award in March of 2026, um, and then start construction in April and in December of 2028. So you'll see the procurement starting in 2024 and construction's um, going to start in 2026. So the procurement's not going to be done until 2028, but we're starting in 2026. And that the plan is to do what we can now, come up with an organized um, schedule that's, that, that lays out the critical paths of work so we can get started on some of those earlier items and save the long lead items like those large transformers closer to December 2028. So I detailed out uh, Hazen and Sawyer's proposal, um, $2.3 million with the contingency, $2.5 million. You can see it's all broken down there for you, um, the in individual costs. So what does that mean? Is that good? Is that bad? Is that high? Here's some metrics for you to consider. So when you're looking at the um, design is a percent of the construction cost. So that construction cost, $24 million, includes the procurement. That's based on 2026 construction costs. And it's important to know that the last two years, we're seeing um, the industry seeing 15 to 20% inflation rates per year, the last two years. So I'm hoping that that stops, but that's 2026. So if it goes beyond that, those numbers may change. Um, 
So you can see it, it's right in line with the industry standards. Um, it's what we would expect to see. So we decided to go with the PSA process because uh, it also gets the MPSA consultants as well. But it's such a large project that we wanted to go out and reach out to everybody out there to try to get as many bids as we can. So we advertised it to everybody and it includes MPSA, uh, which has um, a lot of specific expertise due to familiarity working on our projects. So we, we, we released the proposal, the RFP in September of 2023, and we advertised it to everybody and we I downloaded the information and it went to 552 vendors. We advertised for seven weeks, which is twice as long as we normally do, three and a half. Um, we gave them seven weeks. And in the end, we we have we received two proposals. There's our selection, our main selection criteria right there. Main thing is a, a detailed understanding of the project, uh, enough that we know that they, they understand what's needed to be done, what's expected, that their costs are in line with what we expect and that they have qualified staff working on the project. So we had two, six, six reviewers, pretty diverse. We had deputy director, two associates, tech three, and I wanted some people from the plant they are gonna be working on it. So we got the supervising electrical technician and the wastewater maintenance superintendent. They all scored Hazen and Sawyer as the top pick. And the reason is they, they had strong qualifications, a detailed understanding of the project. Um, they understood what needed to be done. They laid it all out. They broke all their costs down in a way that we can analyze it. And um, overall, it was a very strong proposal. Uh, there was a not to exceed fee of $2.55 million, which is consistent with what we were expecting. It is recommended by the Public Works Department in Santa Rosa Water that the Contract Review Subcommittee recommend the Board of Public Utilities approve a professional services agreement with Hazen and Sawyer to provide engineering design services for the unit treatment plant electrical infrastructure improvement project. So that concludes my my uh, PowerPoint, and I'm here to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you, Squire. Question. In the presentation you mentioned, um, one of the considerations is that because of the life cycle, the plants and the life cycle of the project, there was a lot of proprietary uh, elements that uh, are, were, were built in initially. As you, when we look at a project uh, of this size and the substantialness, is it a priority when we look to new major infrastructure projects to try and uh, refrain from integrating new proprietary pieces as much as possible? I can see how that could kind of limit some of the choices, especially for some, for a project like this, uh, where the time horizon is going to be quite long. So that was one of the reasons why we were going with the procurement method, is because we could make sure that the components would work well together, that it's from a single supplier. Versus when, you, if you were to go out into construction, it may it may meet the specifications, but it could be that as far as compatibility and so forth, it's always better if you have it all the equipment that's integrated design that's specifically designed to work together. Um, so we feel like um, there's no perfect uh, solution, but we feel like the procurement method just gives us the best chance of of, a com of accomplishing that that goal. I like that there's a good amount of redundancy built in. Um, I really, really like the under the choice of doing undergrounding in, in this part of the project. Um, I think the CTS mitigation of the CTS uh, the deck deck process is always challenging on the CTS. So um, congratulations to the team for enduring those. 
Um, I'm curious about the contingency. Um, it's just for my own education. I see that in different projects, there's often a different percentage for a contingency and some higher than on this one. So I'm just curious about why 10% and not 15, for example. Well, yeah, I, I kind of tossed it back and forth, but I figured you look at the overall value of the contract on a smaller project or some, a lower design cost, you, that leaves you less money. So the contingency is enough to keep the design going. If we run into challenges where we need to reevaluate the design or for any other reasons with permitting and so forth, and we feel like the project funding needs to be increased, then you know, we'd rather come back to the board and explain that and then ask for that money. And this this contingency will help us um, continue the project forward, maybe maybe accomplish the goal and or, or at least get us going where we could um, we can keep the project going. So it kind of, yeah, it has to do with a lot with the uncertainty and the overall um, price of the contract, you know, so there's there's a large design fee here. So we thought 10% was, was enough. Okay. Thanks. Um, and then just finally, I appreciate the efforts that were made on the RFP process. Um, I know that, uh, uh, fewer bids have been an ongoing issue, not only for the city of Santa Rosa, but lots of jurisdictions. We're always curious about um, why, for example, do you get a, a sense of uh, the reason for a 30 something that maybe didn't respond? I think that the responses that, that the, the response that you got and the contract proposal that's in front of us today, um, I agree, is a is a is a well thought out uh, project, so it's not any comments on the project before us. But curious if you got any sense to perhaps why those other three might be I think this is such a large project, and the amount of resources that the, a firm would have to dedicate to this, and in this time, um, the, the electrical firms I think are pretty busy. Um, they're working on multiple projects, so they would have to assign a pretty large staff to 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 take on this challenge. Um, and I, I just don't think there's that many big firms out there that want to um, assign resources for multiple years to one project. You know, I think that's my that's my opinion. Appreciate the due diligence on it for leaving the RFP window open for, for longer uh, and that being a, a priority for, for the department of the team. So that's all I've got. Thank you. Along the same line, so there was just the two responses. The second response was it significantly higher, or was it an issue of their qualifications? Or it was significantly lower. Um, it did not reflect um, a detailed understanding of the project. It was pretty obvious in, in what was provided. So the the second proposal we got was uh, from Lee and Rowe, and it was uh, one million seventeen thousand. So it was quite a bit lower. I I have a long list of details if you'd like me to go in. Okay. No, just, just curious. <laughs> I appreciate, you know, wanting to try and uh, get the best bang for your buck, but if they're not qualified and if it's not that they're not, it's not that they're not agencies weren't going to be uh, sufficient to handle what was probably going to come up to, if they had not even contracted and understand that. Then my other question, just so I understand, tiger selling it. So you're going to construct some sort of a fence that during the next couple of wet seasons will allow those tiger salamanders to get out of that particular area? Yes. So the goal is by the time you're ready to break ground, there's no evidence of tiger salamanders in the area where we're going to be digging. Is that it? No, that's okay. not exactly. Um, so the, we're trying to, it's a permit requirement and a best practice to try and mitigate against any incidental takes, which are accidentally killing one of these salamanders so you know part of the mitigation process we will mitigate for the take of the salamanders financially but we want to make sure and the permitting agents want to make sure that we don't just go in there and okay we have mitigation now let's just go grade the whole thing if we have an opportunity to save these salamanders by putting this fencing up in advance it's also a permit requirement then we we can minimize the amount of take, but we're not we're not doesn't mean all the salamanders are going to go out through that fence. Okay, thank you. That that helps. Uh, that, those are all the questions I have. So just call for a motion.
Um, I am happy to move that the contract that we've set to me recommend to the board of public utilities approve a professional services agreement with Hayes and Sorin to provide engineering design services for the Laguna treatment plant for electrical infrastructure improvements project. Yeah. I'll second that. So we have a motion and a second. This time we'll open up for public comments on item 3.1. You're in the room. Please move to the microphone. Seeing that we're moved without a roll call, please. Board Member Bathford? Aye. Chair Goffman? Aye. And that passes unanimously with Board Member Greg Lassen. Very good. That concludes our agenda for today's meeting. Thank you all for being here. Thank you, Dwyer, for your presentation. Thank you. Thank you.